Hey, what's going on? I recently purchased a Grandfather SF70 and it doesn't have temperature control. It needs temperature control. Let's go! Party time, party time, party time brews. This song ain't no good, but we got nothing to lose. So how are we gonna add the temperature control? Basically with a Kegland temp twister coil. It's basically a stainless steel coil. Has a nice long fitting on the top so you can use it with different size fermenters. I'm gonna be using it on this SF70. You can use it on a bucket. I already have one installed in an all-rounder, which I may do a video of as well. But for now, we're just gonna install this on the SF70. It's gonna use pretty much all of the length and we're just gonna put it into the top. The only things you really need with this, if you're not uh, cutting it, is a pipe bender. Here's a pipe bender. It bends pipes. Really all I wanna do is bend it so that it fits kind of flush with the angle of the domed lid. Uh, if you have a look at this, it's angled, it's domed. I just wanna have it basically as perpendicular as possible to the lid so that the pipes will go through as straight as possible and the bulkhead fittings that come with this temp twister coil, these bad boys here, will fit nice and flush or as flush as possible. So let's get at it. Okay, so I pretty much lied about only needing a pipe bender to do this. You need a tape measure to measure the holes on the end of the chiller. You need a marker to mark those holes. A hammer and some sort of a punch to punch a divot for the pilot hole. You need a drill bit to drill the pilot hole. You need a step drill bit to drill the wider pilot holes so that your bulkhead fittings will fit on. And of course you need a drill and it always helps out using some sort of an oil to lubricate that hole as you're drilling through the metal as it gets very hot. And pipe benders. Okay, so the big thing about the lid to this fermenter, the SF70, is that it does have an inch and a half triclamp fitting and I don't wanna drill the holes too close to the center of it because the triclamp fitting may interfere with it. So I'm gonna give it a couple inches off the side and as close to the center as I can. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is measure the distance between that. If we take a look at the top, you measure it out about 70 millimeters or two and three quarter inches. Down at the bottom, 70 millimeters or two and three quarter inches. And that should work out pretty good to keep this parallel because it'll make it easier to push through the top when it is parallel. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is measure the top part here. And like I said, I'm gonna go down two inches here, make my first mark. Okay, we'll take a look at this. I did measure 70 millimeters, but it is 70 millimeters from one center to the other edge. So it's actually 65 millimeters center to center. So that's what I'm gonna measure out and try to keep those roughly the same distance from the top here. That looks like that will work pretty good. And I'll just roughly check it there, 50 millimeters and 50 millimeters. Those should be two good spots to drill the hole. Now that the two holes are marked 65 millimeters apart, don't worry about that guy there. We're gonna punch some divots in there in order to make a pilot divot for drilling the pilot hole. Okay, so before we start drilling these, we'll give it a little spritz of oil. That will help it cool down a bit. Keep going. These things cost approximately this much to replace if you happen to screw it up. And we'll go for the next one. Now that we got the two holes that you can barely see drilled there, we're gonna widen them out with a step bit so it's big enough to fit this bulkhead fitting. I believe it's about seven eighths, but what you wanna do is just go a step at a time and check it after each one to get the tightest fit possible. And speaking of tight fits, why not bring Party Time Brewing into your life by subscribing now if you haven't already. Like this video if you're bored and share it with a friend because everybody has the SF70 fermenter and this is super relevant to everyone. Anyway, let's get this drilled out. And for this one here with the step drill especially, you're gonna to wanna to use lots of oil because it does get hot. And again, we're just going step by step. Ooh, baby. Okay, so the last thing you want to get once you have those two holes in there is you just wanna kinda of fix the edges a bit to make it a little less rough. So you can go backwards. That should help it a little bit. Just a little bit from the inside to get rid of all the burrs there to make it a little better for the seal. And now that you've done that, the big thing you wanna do is make sure you clean it off good because iron filings in beer suck. So for this piece here, on the all-rounder, I didn't really worry about which end it went in. I put it in this way with the big spot sticking out. On this one, I wanna put it with the gasket on the inside of the tank and this piece facing down so that I can't force the coil into the fermenter. And as well, it'll make it so when I'm pushing down on the duotype fitting on the top, it's not gonna, it'll stay locked better. So we're gonna put it that way. And also the kind of rounded edge with the gasket there will be less of an effort to kind of screw in on the bottom where this can 
lay on the dome and it's not theoretically gonna cause as much damage or as much denting in to get it tight. So we'll go with that. That's how I did it. Again, I will be bending these in a second, but that's a lot easier doing it that way. And then you can just put them on and come through the holes. Since I have them kind of off on the side, it is gonna require kind of a dynamic bend. One's gonna be kind of out to this side and the other one's gonna kind of be out to this side. So take that in mind when we figure that out. But quick way to get it in there. Looks pretty good, you got a coil. So I'll try to give you a little idea of how this works here. Basically, we are just gonna put this across the hole and I'm gonna move this little circle until it somewhat matches and looks pretty good off the side there. And if you take a look at that, it's sitting at about nine degrees, nine degrees on there. So it's not too much of a bend, but just gives me a good idea. So it should be easier to bend now. So I'm just gonna bend it 10 degrees and see where it goes. Maybe slightly under 10, cause it's nine. As you can see, it's really not that much there. Okay, so once you have those slightly bent there, we're gonna throw these pieces back on and we will see how our bendiness went. This is the second time I used one of these benders, so who knows? Maybe it's not just good, it's good enough. Okay, so you can see those are decently parallel with that. However, this is not quite resting straight down, so I kinda wanna get it straight down. I'm going to put a little bit more of a bend in it. And now, unless I've gone opposite way, it should work. And now, as you can see, that will sit a lot nicer in there. Could maybe even use a little bit more, but that's good enough. Now that we've got the coil hooked up, we've got the three eight inch coils kind of popping out the top. It's just a matter of hooking it up to a glycol chiller or a ice water bath. Uh, the way I'm gonna do that is with a pump. So I basically just have the most plain immersion or submersion pump you can get with at more beer, uh, I think it was 40 bucks. And I wanna set it up with the duo tight line. So bought a bunch of three eight inch line, I actually bought 10 meters, I don't need that much right now, but that's what I'll have set up for now. And basically three eight inch by half inch piece to go on the top of the immersion pump or the submersion pump, submersible pump. I guess that's one, not submersion. And basically just have the two 90 degree elbows to go on the top here. Just be careful, make sure they lock in properly and they don't push down too, too far. So those are on there. They should be a good seal on that. Recommend getting one of these, a hose cutter. Just makes everything a lot easier and I always recommend having lots of hose around. We're just gonna take 12 feet just so you get the idea of what's going on here. So basically, nice and easy. She just pops into there and pops into your chiller. Something you do wanna check with the chiller to make sure it's gonna chill properly is you want to attach the direct glycol, the line that's coming with the cold water onto the straight down pipe that goes to the bottom. Nope, root the glycol so the glycol goes through the coil first and then returns off the straight section. I did this wrong here and we'll explain soon. Okay, so then we just go and hook up the return line. And once the return line's hooked up, we can test out the pump, see how she works. So here's a little chunk of the fermentation profile on a blonde I made. As you may notice, I didn't get the chiller hooked up until the end of the fermentation. The coil was able to get the temperature from 21 degrees Celsius down to about 6 degrees. The problem with this is that you can see on the graph from my wrap pill, it is only showing 12 degrees Celsius. That's because I routed the glycol in the opposite way it should have been. By routing it to the straight section of the coil first, it made the coldest area at the bottom of the fermenter where it would stay. This makes the warmer area stay on top and it didn't cause any recirculation of the water. When the cold is starting at the top of the fermenter, the cold wort will fall to the bottom and the warm wort will rise, causing a gentle recirculation which will allow for a much more homogeneous temperature mix. So there you have it, putting a chilling coil into the SF70 fermenter or any other stainless fermenter that doesn't have a chilling coil or you maybe want to try a cheaper option for some. The big takeaways from this are that you basically need to make sure once you get the coil set up that the glycol, the chilled glycol line is the one that has the starts of the coils. I don't know if there's a technical term for that, but yeah, starts of the coils and then returns up the straight up pipe. Otherwise you'll get chilling from the bottom and it'll stay kind of stagnant towards the bottom. 
So if you keep that in mind, make sure you hook up the chiller to the right connection. I had this hooked up the wrong way for my fermentation and it was still able to get it down to six degrees Celsius or somewhere in the 40s, I guess, Fahrenheit. And once again, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already and you like it. And maybe check out a few other videos like this one. Subscribe. Thanks a lot. PartyTimeBrewing.com for the hat.